Hi, welcome to this tutorial. Before we start, kindly subscribe to my channel, like the video and share it with your friends. Today we are going to solve Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics Paper 2 Extended, Variant 2 1, November 2018. Question number 1. Carlos starts work at 21.20 and finishes at 6.15 the next day. Calculate how long Carlos is at work. So his starting time is 21. 20 and after 21 the next full hour is 22 right 22 23 and 24 this is 20 minutes if you add 40 minutes you will have 22 and this is one hour and one hour so till 12 o'clock in the night he has uh, worked for two hours 40 minutes and then till morning 6 15 Add this together and you will get 8.55. So 8 hours and 55 minutes. Question number 2. In the diagram, AB is equal to AC and BN is equal to NC. Complete the statement using a mathematical term. Triangle ABN is congruent to triangle ACN. It is congruent because they have two equal sides. Therefore, the angles are going to be equal. And the third angle, which is 90 degrees, is also equal. If all the angles and all the sides are equal, then it is congruent. Question number three. This is a scatter diagram. And we need to find the correlation that it shows. As it's going downwards, the relationship is negative. There are only three answers for a question like this. Negative correlation, positive or no correlation. If the points go upward like that, it's positive. And if they are scattered randomly, there is no correlation. The next question. If you have been given uh, two numbers in, standard form and we have to add them and give the answer in standard form put the whole thing in the calculator and you will get this answer we have to write it in standard form so when you're writing in standard form there can only be one number before the decimal so we are going to write 7.36 we do not write the zeros that are followed multiply by 10 to the power of the numbers that are there after the first digit. How many digits are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this will be multiplied by 10 to the power of 7. Question number 5. We have to expand and simplify. First we'll multiply 3x with 2x. That will give us 6x squared. And then 3x with 9, which will give us plus 27x. And then negative 7 with 2x, which is negative 14x. And negative 7 with 9, which is negative 63. Add the like terms together, which is 27x and 14x. And we will get 6x squared. plus 13x minus 63. Question number 6. This is a bearing question. The bearing of A from B is 227. So this is 227. Find the bearing of B from A. We need to find this inside angle. If you have a reflex angle and you want to find the other bearing, subtract 180 from the reflex angle that you got. And that will give us 47. But because it is bearing, we write it in three figures, so 047. Question number seven. Y is inversely proportional to X cubed. When X is two, Y is equal to 0 0.5. Find Y in terms of X. 
if we have inversely proportional we have to form an equation y is equal to k over whatever it is inversely proportional to it in this case x cube substitute the y and the x so y is 0 0.5 and x is 2 cross multiply 0 0.5 multiply by 2 to the power of 3 will give us our k that is 4 and now you form your equation y is equal to 4 over x cube and that is our answer if we have directly proportional then we need to write y is equal to k and whatever it is proportional to question number eight is a limit of accuracy or upper bound and lower bound question Safia has a barrel containing 6,000 milliliters of oil correct to the nearest 100 milliliter. She uses the oil to fill bottles which each hold exactly 50 milliliter. Calculate the upper bound for the number of bottles she can fill. So this is correct to the nearest 100 milliliter. Whenever you have nearest to something, divide that number by 2. And 100 divided by 2 is 15. To find the upper bound, of 6000 we are going to add 50 so we will have 6050 and she uses the oil to fill bottles which hold exactly 50 milliliter so we do not have to find the upper bound of 50 milliliter because it's an exact thing so how many bottles can she fill 6050 divided by 50 121 bottles that's our answer nine this is a simple interest question Jen invests eight hundred dollars at a rate of three percentage per year simple interest calculate the value of her investment at the end of four years to find simple interest we use the formula interest is equal to PRT over 100 where P is your principal R is your rate of interest, I is interest, and T is time in years. So let's just write down what we have. Interest is equal to 800 is our P. 3 is your rate of interest, and time is 4 years. Divided by 100, this will give us our interest. 96 but in the question they did not ask for the interest they asked us to find the value of her investment at the end of four years she had invested eight hundred dollars so we use this formula amount is equal to principal plus interest that is the value of her interest a uh, value of her investment 800 plus 96 that will give us 896 dollars question number 10 a water tank in the shape of a cuboid has length 1.5 meters and width 1 meter the water in the tank is 60 centimeters deep calculate the number of liters of water in the tank to find the number of liters we need to know the volume before we begin uh, the length is 1.5 meters and width is 1 meter and the height is 60 centimeters to find the volume of a cuboid we use the formula length times width times height but we cannot multiply if you have different units so you convert meters into centimeter to convert meters into centimeter we multiply by 100 so that will give us 150 multiplied by 100 multiplied by 60 and we'll get 90,000 cubic centimeter but we want to find the number of liters 1000 cubic centimeter is equal to 1 liter therefore to convert uh, this cubic centimeter into liter we have to divide by 1000 90,000 
divided it's not 900,000 divided by 1000 will give us 900 liters so that is our answer moving on to question number 11 this is a sequence question we have been given five terms and we have to find the next term what is the difference between the two terms if we add 3 we get the next term so 20 plus 3 will be 23 part b find an expression for the nth term when you add or subtract to get the next term that's called an arithmetic sequence if you have an arithmetic sequence you can find the nth term by using the formula a plus n minus 1t a is your first term and d is your difference so our first term is 8 and our difference is 3 we just expand the bracket 3 multiply by n 3n negative 1 multiply by 3 negative 3 put the numbers in the calculator and you will get 8 minus 3 plus 5 so this is the answer there is a shorter way to solve this question for an arithmetic sequence the first thing is that you see what is the difference we know that 3 is the difference so we write down 3n and then from the first term we subtract the difference 8 minus 3 plus 5 so if you understand you can use this method also question number 12 find the integer values of n that satisfy the inequality so the inequality has been given to us let's first make n the subject so we are going to divide all the numbers by 4 15 divided by 4 will give us 3.75 and this is n and 28 divided by 4 will give us 7 so we solve the inequality we have to find the integer values integer means positive or negative whole number so you cannot use the decimal it can be less than or equal to uh, sorry n is more than or, or equal to 3.75 so what is the integer after 3.75 4 5 and 6 we cannot include 7 because this is less than 7 not less than or equal to 7 so these are the three integer values question number 13 we have been given a triangle and let's read the question the diagram shows a triangle a b c and an arc with center c and radius 6.5 centimeter using a straight edge and compass only construct the locus of points inside the triangle that are equidistant from BA and BC so we have been given two lines BA and BC when you want to find the locus of two lines it means we need to find the angle bisector to find the angle bisector from B with a compass make an arc like this and with the same length make an arc on BC after that from BC without changing the length of the compass make an arc in the center then from BA with the same compass length make an arc at the center and cut the other arc join the two arcs together this is your angle bisector this is how your angle bisector will look like this is equidistant from BA and from BC. Part B, shade the region inside the triangle that is more than 6.5 cm from C and nearer to BA than to BC. So it is more than 6.5, that will be this part somewhere, and it is nearer to BA. So this is the shaded region because it is nearer to BA and it is more than 6.5 question number 14 is a fraction question 
without using the calculator, we have to solve this fraction. And we must show all the working and give the fraction in the simplest form. So let's start. 3 over 8 is already simplified. This number here is an um, improper fraction. So mixed fraction, we have to change it to improper. For changing to improper, we multiply the denominator with the side number. So 4 multiplied by 2. Whatever answer you get, you add it with the number in the numerator. That will give us 4 multiplied by 2, 8 plus 1, 9 over 4. If the sign is a divide, we change the sign to multiply. And then the number after the sign, we flip it over. So it's 9 over 4. We will write it as 4 over 9. You can put this in calculator and you will get 1 over 6. Easy 3 marks. Question number 5. Now this is an algebraic fraction. The method to solve it is the same as any other fraction. You need to have a common denominator. That's the first step. I have a 3 here and I have x plus 2 here. So to make the denominator same, I'm going to times this by x plus 2. If I times in the denominator, I also have to times in the numerator. Remember to put the bracket. And I'm going to times 3 here. So now we have a common denominator. We can write it as one fraction. 3x plus 2. We have to expand the numerator. x times x will be x square. x times 2 is 2x. Negative 5 multiplied by x is negative 5x. And negative 5 multiplied by 10, negative 10. Plus 18. When we simplify this, we'll have x square minus 3x plus 8, 18 over 3x plus 2. Sorry, this is a 3 here. Now we are going to expand also the denominator, which will give us 3 multiplied by x, 3x, and 3 multiplied by 2 plus 6. When you're expanding two brackets, if you have x minus 5 and x plus 2. If the coefficient of x in both the brackets is 1, then you can use this method. Write x square. These two numbers put in the calculator, add them together. Negative 5 plus 2 will give you negative 3, put an x. And then you multiply the two numbers. Negative 5 multiplied by 2 will give you plus 10. So this is a shorter way to expand your bracket. This brings us to the end of this video. For question number 16 onwards, kindly watch the second part. Thank you for watching.